Hello, people. We were going to do a live today on Saturday, but to be honest with you, I was in the hospital yesterday. I'm still not feeling like uh, tomorrow we're going to do a live. I know I keep saying that, but it's based on my health. And uh, we, we're going to do a we're going to drop a video today. And uh, I just want to thank everybody that has sent me messages asking me how I'm doing and stuff. Uh, I don't want to tell you what's wrong, to be honest with you. It has to do with my blood pressure, but it's under control now. Uh, Danny, how you doing? Good, Lee. I'm fine. Okay. And uh, Danny, uh, I appreciate you uh, sending your best yesterday, too. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so what, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about Sammy Gravano again. And people say, why are we talking about Sammy Gravano again? Because Sammy puts up a lot of stuff where he doesn't tell the truth. And yes, Sammy's very popular. He's a great storyteller. And yes, he's a real gangster. We're not knocking him for that, people. We're just knocking him as what he is. He's a guy who ratted and is doing great in life now, despite the fact that he put so many people in prison. In a basic rundown, Danny, what, you, uh, what is your opinion of this Arizona? Uh, when he Okay, he's in prison. He gets out of prison. He does five years. The feds let him out of prison. They send him to Colorado. He lives in a mountain town. He gets, he grows tired of it, tells them, screw you, and he's off to Arizona. Uh, what do you think about how, how that whole thing started down in Arizona? Well, I think it basically started from his son, Gerard. And um, I think Gerard went to his father, explained to his father what was going on. Initially, Sammy didn't want nothing to do with it. And I guess Sammy you know, had an epiphany and he contacted his son and said, let's talk about this. And uh, if uh, you're going to do it, I'm going to be part of it. And I'm going to show you how to run it correctly. And uh, he actually, they actually did increase the business and start going crazy, didn't they? Oh yeah. It became very lucrative. And uh, you know, whether or not that was Sammy's doing, or it just was something that took off because of what it was ecstasy. And, uh, you know, it, it catapulted, essentially. Okay, let me remove that. We're going to play that in a minute. We're going to get, um, we're going to play first. Uh, there's a gentleman that dealt uh, ecstasy out in Arizona. His name uh, is Sean Atwood. A lot of you are familiar with him. A lot of people agree, don't think he's 100% the real thing. And a lot of people do. But the fact of the matter is he has a very, very successful podcast. He's up to over 700,000 subscribers. So the man must be doing something right. And I would say we're going to use some of his, uh, we're going to use a little piece of his video, Danny. So I would tell people, please go subscribe to Sean Atwood's channel. And I hope that's good enough for you, Sean, uh, for us using a piece of your video. And I'm going to put this up and I'm going to play this because I want you guys to see how Gravano came to the conclusion of taking over the ecstasy business in, in Arizona. My guy, I was actually, he's strapped. I said, look, just watch my back. You know, I don't know who these people are. They're going to kidnap me. Just open up on the motherfuckers. And um, we go into this back room. They clear it. And I'm, I'm talking to them. And they're trying to push their pills onto my enterprise. And I say, look, I've got a good reputation for the white and beige presses out of Holland. You guys are pushing these colored pills. Now, colored pills, it doesn't necessarily mean it could be bad, but the beige and the white presses were generally the most reliable. But there'd be pink pills, blue pills. And it, it quite it quite often can indicate that it, there's some kind of uh, toxic substance in it that's been thrown together with some food coloring. So anyway, they jump one of the big one. There's a shorter one and there's a massive one. The massive one jumps off off the sofa who the hell are you disrespecting our, our pills? This guy was like six and a half foot meathead. One call to Sammy the Bull and we can have you taken out to the desert. Now, I was aware of this from the news. Sammy the Bull, co-conspirated up to 19 murders. Are these guys blowing smoke or is this real? I didn't know. But when I left her with my bodyguard and, and my wife, uh, we were on the, on the drive. Well, she was unconscious on GHB. <laughs> she overdosed herself and on the drive home discussing this with Rossetti. Um, he's like, yeah, you know, this is, this is getting heavy now. Um, when people like that move in, but what happened was the crew, one of the crews working for Gravano, they kidnapped my, 
They lured my top ecstasy salesperson into a nightclub in Scottsdale, took him into the men's room under the pretext of doing a deal, smashed his teeth out, took his money, took his drugs. So there was an ongoing struggle with those guys. Now, at that point in time, I legitimately thought... Yeah, Mike Lee. So I just brought, I played that people because I wanted to give you an idea that Sammy was a gangster from New York. These guys are here dealing uh, these pills uh, and all of a sudden Sammy comes in and takes everything over and he does it with brute force. Does that surprise you at all, Danny, how he took over that business there? Absolutely not. That's what Sammy did and does. Um, you know, he, he saw money to be made irregardless of the situation that he was in. Um, and he took advantage of it because essentially it was being run by, you know, kids and he brought in uh, some people um, and uh, he started to, uh, you know, make it bigger than what it was. And he's working with his son, his daughter, uh, the son's girlfriend, uh, and also with uh, his wife. And Karen's boyfriend. And Karen's boyfriend. And, and when you think about that, you know, everybody says, okay, Sammy is here and he's changing his life. Can you possibly go from being that low to changing your life? Well, look, at you know, all I'm going to say, and this is my opinion, Sammy the Bull never changed his life. Sammy the Bull is an opportunist. An opportunity landed in his lap and he took full advantage of it, just like he would if he didn't rat and he was out on the street still. And here's what the prosecutor went. Okay, so here's what they did. Uh, the feds, uh, it was a state case, and it, and it started out as a state case. Then when the feds got involved, the state did not want the feds to get too involved. They held back a lot of stuff because they were afraid the feds were going to let, was going to let Sammy go. Uh, and his sentence, he wound up doing what, 17 years, I believe? Yeah. Now, his sentence turned out to be a light sentence, Danny, because he only got, you know, he was supposed to do two, the Fed charges and the state charges. They got run concurrent instead of consecutive. Yeah. And you would figure if they know that this guy was it was involved with 19 murders, whether or not he, he, he was a protective witness or whatever, at that time, he wasn't a protected witness. Does it make any sense to you why they would you know, give him that sentence? No, I, I, I can't. I'm not an attorney, and I can't really talk about why. But the fact of the matter is, is that um, he should have got a lot more time and probably, possibly never gotten out. Um, you know, Sammy the Bull operated with these kids. He was um, an idol to these kids once they found out who he was. And, uh, you know, Gerard's father, he was Sammy the Bull, an underboss in a crime family in New York. So, you know, it was like um, it was prestige for these kids to be in his company. And obviously he, um, you know, he, he played that to the hill. And Michael Papa, the guy you just saw on the screen, was initially the, the founder of this operation. Right. And he yeah. And he essentially was put to the side. Sammy told him that, uh, you know, I'm going to use you as my right hand man, this, that and the other thing. And Michael Papa, you know, obviously soaked it all up and uh, because of who Sammy the Bull is or was. Now, Michael Papa, people don't realize that. And here's Michael Papa right here. He was, uh, uh, it's like you said, he was in charge of this whole thing. And Sammy basically moved in. The guy really worshipped him. He even admits it when he's doing his testimony. And uh, that's how he basically took over. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, the fact of the matter is, is that here, here's how diabolical and, and, and low level life that this Gravano had. Who the fuck involves their kids, their wife? I mean, you know, I, I don't know if you're going to do something, you know, you involve your kids, your wife. He was he, he's a low life and that's all it'll ever be. And I know people are going to start screaming. Oh, you don't know, Sammy. Listen, Sammy is a fucking rat. Sammy's a degenerate. And Sammy is a, a narcissist, opportunist. He's going to do whatever he can do to make himself be bigger than what he was. And that's a fact. And what do you think? Uh, I wonder what he was thinking this day when uh, here he is busted. 
uh, and they knew, and, and, and at that time there was, uh, guys down there getting ready to kill him. Well, yeah, there was, there was a couple of guys. One in particular was named Huck Cabanara, who was also part of that crew. And, uh, he was sent there by the higher ups to, uh, to kill him. And, you know, Sammy brags about, oh, I knew Huck was here, or if Huck is here, I'll kill him. And, you know, you, you guys can believe what you want. It's just lucky the FBI interceded the conversation and they caught and they essentially arrested Huck and because they knew what he was going to do. So Sammy had no idea. Huck Carbonara I was absolutely close to whacking Sammy. He was in his office. He was sitting in his office looking around. Nobody even knew about that. I don't even think it's talked about that much. But by the grace of God, he got saved, Sammy. And Huck eventually got arrested. And did Huck rat? He's going to die in prison, isn't he? Dying as it is. Yes, he's he's in bad health. He's not doing well. Uh, he was just up for a uh, early release for medical reasons, and he was denied, obviously. So he's essentially uh, he's got two feet in a coffin as we speak. And this is the groups. Uh, these are the young guys when they're all sitting there ready for sentence. Uh, they're they were apparent Dominic Sarico, David Seabrook, Gerard Gorbano, uh, Javon uh, Islajovic. Okay, make fun of me, make pronouncing that name, people. Uh, and Michael uh, Daling. Uh, they were facing a number of charges related to the distribution seals of the designer drug ecstasy. So, a lot of people went down on this. Uh, Gerard wound up doing nine years. Is that, or he was sentenced to nine years. Is that right? Yeah, correct. Okay. And uh, I guess he got out with some good time. And um, then uh, his wife, did she, how much, how, did she get any time or time served or? I don't know. I know, I know his daughter got three years probation. I don't know what Deborah got off the top of my head. I don't believe she did any time. Right. Um, but I, but I could be mistaken. Okay, let's get back to some more of this. Okay, and now this guy, uh, Gravano's partner, basically is Michael Papa is the one. Isn't it kind of uh, ironic that Michael Papa did what Sammy did and basically told the story about him? Well, the backstory to this that people are not privy to, um, it was also reported that he told Michael Papa to keep your mouth shut, we'll get through this. Now, how ironic is that? Here you got a rat a federal informant that, that, you know, admitted to 19 murders and he's telling this kid not to rat through intimidation. Isn't that, you know, so he, here's my theory and here's my thing behind this, you know, Sammy the bull ratted because it suited him. You understand? And he's trying to tell this kid not to rat because it suited, it would, it would suit him. So all you guys that say, oh, you know, he, he ratted because John Gotti did this, John Gotti, you people live in a fantasy world. Again, ratting is about making yourself come out better. Ratting is, 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 you know, throwing the blame on somebody else. That's what ratting is about. And Sammy the Bull is a quintessential rat, and he'll save his own ass any way he can. And, and, and the proof is in the pudding because that's what he did. I don't give a fuck what John Gotti said. Gravano was a rat before this. It was just a matter of time before it got out. And this is one of the, this is the reason when he ratted on the Gambino crime family, that was his out. Yeah, and and so and getting back and with Papa and Gerard, they basically met in 1999 and became uh, and this uh, guy Papa became the middleman uh, to purchase the M MDMA or ecstasy, what they call it. Uh, but then they had to line it up through Brooklyn. Correct. Uh, so who set that up through Brooklyn? I mean, was that Sammy using his ties in Brooklyn? Or oh, I'm sure it was. Yeah, I'm sure it was. You got to remember, too, there was a lot of guys that Sammy was influenced over in the witness protection program. And he still had a lot of contacts through rats. So not only that, he wanted to start his own organization, mafia, if you will, in, in Arizona using witness protection informants. Yes. That was his That was his theory. He was going to make a, a, a an organized crime family in Arizona utilizing rats. So how, how insidious is that? It was a gang of uh, steroid kids, uh, young kids that would do anything and would look up to him. Sure. Uh, and um, if it doesn't come down, I mean, you look at a guy like Gerard now, he seems like he's straightened out his life. Okay. He, he, he's part of, he's, help 
his father were what he's doing now. If this bus doesn't come down, it probably go, ends a lot worse than, than it did when you really think about it because they weren't out there on the street that long. I, I, I look, you know, all of Sammy the Bull's relevancy now is YouTube, okay? And anybody that's on YouTube is subjected to be ridiculed, picked on, yelled at, screamed at, just like we are. But the fact of the matter is, is Sammy killed 19 people and a young kid, an innocent kid, okay? And should he have a right to come on YouTube and tell his stories and be, and be uh, you know, idolized or, or you, know, um, you know, talked great about? I don't think so. And uh, this proof is in the pudding. You know, he, he, he was involved in an ecstasy ring that he took advantage of kids. That's what he did, kids, for the most part. Kids and, uh, he, and, and yeah. kids and family. And he utilized his influence of who he was. He used his scare tactics to threaten people. And he wasn't ashamed to say who he was. He was telling people and that his underlings or his kids, per se, were using his name. You know, saying that uh, Sammy the Bull will do this to you. So, and, and this Papa guy said that Sammy became a father figure to him, kind of reeled him in. And, uh, but then this guy Papa got real nervous because in June of 1999, uh, Gerard Garano devised a plan to steal 25,000 pills and right. uh, about $200,000 from a supplier. Uh, and Papa testified that he told Sammy Gavano that he was afraid and the suppliers re retaliate. And Sammy told him, uh, Danny, don't worry about it. I'll take care of the supplier. So here's yeah. a moment. I mean, he was full force back into the mob right in Arizona, planning on whacking people. Well, sure. He's using what he learned from when he was involved in organized crime. And, you know, he was basically using his influence by his name. Um, to get what he wanted any way he would or could. Would he have committed murders? Absolutely. Um, do you? Do I think he would have did it personally? I don't think so. That's my opinion. I think he would have used these people that were idolizing him, and uh, they probably at one point would have did whatever he asked. And there was a guy named Philip Pascucci, and, uh, oh boy, I hope I said that right, and uh, Papa, which thank goodness yeah. is Papa. Okay, yeah, so... They worked together, but they also talked about that Sammy was planning on whacking a whole lot of people, and he told them that. Well, yeah, and not only that, this guy Pasquale, Pascucci, um, according to his direct testimony, was also possibly going to kill Gravano. So it was kind of diabolical. It, you know, it was, you know, people turning on people in that, in that uh, specific uh, realm of them dealing ecstasy. It makes you think uh, whether Sammy was planning on killing him. Yeah, Vice, yeah absolutely. But, you know, it, it, listen, this was a completely disorganized crew of people. And the only, you know, um, uh, seemingly connection to, to all of this was Sammy the Bull's name. I don't think this was a, a multi-million dollar business. I could be wrong. Um, but I do believe it was an influential business. But again... It was so disorganized and it, it was kids and it was, yep. you know, you know, it, it was a guy that was uh, a one time underboss of a crime family trying to get back into that life, per se. And he and he told and and, and Papa said that um, uh, Sammy told him, I own Arizona. It's locked down. He added, you can't Correct. sell pills here without me going through me. So basically he's saying that he he, he got to the point where he's in his mind thinking he's running the drug empire of all of Arizona. And under cross-examination, uh, Gravano's attorney, uh, uh, Papa denied allegations that he belonged to a supremacist gang. Uh, that's what they used, tried to use against this guy in um, counter when they were uh, cross-examining him by calling him white supremacist and stuff. And Papa to this day says, look, I was no white supremacist. It was brought up by Sammy's lawyer to discredit me. Uh, no, of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, listen, everything is, is to defend and deflect. Sammy was a, was a, was a, was a um, master at it, and he still is. You know, uh, you listen to his stories and everything that he says, he, he basically makes himself look like, you know, he was the victim. He had to do what he was supposed to do because of retaliation. He never owns or accepts the fact that of what he did. Everything's an excuse, even the 19 murders. Um, you know, so again, any, listen, 
Sammy the Bull, you know, is on a is on a YouTube channel, and um, he has a right to be ridiculed. If anybody doesn't like that, then go to a private site so all you fanboys can relish in his bullshit. And yeah, let me get rid of this real quick. Uh... Okay. <laughs> One minute, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, well, you can figure out how to get rid of this sucker. Okay, so what's really, what's interesting about this too, and most people, this is how defiant Sammy was. This is how nasty Sammy was, even after he got sentenced. Uh, when the judge announced to him, uh, he, she said, Mr. Gravano, uh, it's a good thing. Uh, uh, she wanted to give him more, to, more time than what she was giving him. Uh, but when he, he find her, uh, when she fined him $100,000, he wisely said to her, uh, where the hell am I going to get that from when he was walking out of court? He was worried about $100,000 and the man's getting ready to go in and do 18 years. Listen, you know, again, you know, we can talk about this guy until this, the moon comes up. And there's millions of stories about this guy. I mean, but everybody seems to concentrate on he was an underboss. He was a, a tough guy from Brooklyn. He lived on the streets. That's all true. But how come none of you address the fact that he's a rat? All you address is that he was right in ratting because of John Gotti. I don't know where you people get that information from. It's, it's, it's you, know, I, I, you know, everybody blames somebody else for the fact that he's a rat. He's a scumbag and he's a rat. And that's, that's what he is. And of course, he's on YouTube because everybody makes him relevant in, in the sense of him having a platform and being able to spew everything that he's done to other people. And nobody seems to feel that, uh, you know, that's right. I don't believe it's right. That would be like me coming on here saying, I killed this one, that one, and the other one. You don't call me a scumbag, a, a, a scum, a low life motherfucker, but you're going to idolize a, a Schmeagle looking motherfucker that says, you know, what he did in the street was the good thing to do. He was told to do it. He was a soldier. He listened. <laughs> And, 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 you know, another thing, uh, Karen Gavano, she got off very lightly because she pleaded guilty to taking part in uh, drug-related transactions, the use no. of wire communications. Correct. She got three years probation. Yeah, and, and she's and, another one, you know, she and I don't, I don't mean to pick on a woman, but, you know, she's another piece of junk. You know, she, she glorifies and idolizes her father. Right or wrong, she never, she never says what he did. She always deflects, and that's all. That's what they all do. That's what they all do. And then, and Gerard got involved in the streets. Well, in part of a part of a gang himself, uh, but you know, he he seems to have turned his life around. Out of all of them, he's the one that seemed to turn his life around. Uh, as for anybody else involved with him, uh, it didn't seem that way. Uh, so, Danny, what do you think? Uh, would have happened if a regular Joe like yourself or I got caught involved in this drug ring? Are we looking at life? Oh, absolutely. It's not, especially the laws in Arizona are a lot harder than a lot of the other laws in this different States. Arizona is one like Vegas is one. They're going to, they're going to put, they're going to put you away. They're going to bury you. And uh, unfortunately, for whatever reason, they made out and uh, he was able to come back out and, and, uh, and start a life on YouTube because that's where his, revenue comes from. He has no other legitimacy. He don't work. He don't have a job. He's on YouTube telling stories that, you know, I, I believe are, are 90% embellished. And I believe a lot of them are just outright lies. Do I, do I believe he has some stories? Absolutely. But I'm not, I, I don't believe that this guy can go on for years with stories. I don't believe it. Well, that's why he's signed with Hollywood now. He's about to become a major movie actor at the age of 78. Isn't isn't it amazing that um, you know you 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 became a you were an underboss in a crime family you became a a federal informant a rat you go to prison you commit nineteen murders you get out you get arrested for an ecstasy uh, drug involvement then you get out again and now you're sitting pretty and none of the money that this guy gets goes to any of the families that he killed right right or wrong and yeah. uh, you know he he essentially is living the life of Riley um, look at him. 
you know, he, he don't have a worry in the world because nobody's going to do anything to him, but he's allowed to come on YouTube and glorify what he did. So in that respect, I think I have the right to talk about him and call him whatever the fuck I want to call him because I have a platform too. And you know, people, let, let me tell you something. When we do st when we do stories on Sammy Gavano, we get a lot of negative on it too. Uh, it, when did you say that? Uh, even yeah, because your... yeah, because these people look at these people need something to believe in. Um, and I'm going to use this analogy. It's just like when guys go to prison. The first thing they do is either they get fucked or they find the Bible. Okay, and now they want to be part of a cult in the in the prison to get them out so they can say they survived in prison. They walk around holding a Bible and, 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 and believing in something that they need to, to, to make it to come to get through. And uh, that's what these guys do that watch Sammy Gravano. They're so happy to say, Oh, I got a book signed by him. Or I, I um, said something in his comment and he answered me. This is, this is their, their, um, their, their pinnacle of, of a wise guy. They, they, they interact with him. And these are basically and primarily all fanboys that uh, that jump to his cock and suck it. And, and the and the reason we're saying this, and and, and we're not trying to Sammy Gravano people out to you know, it, he is news because he's getting bigger and bigger people. And I had a, someone say, "Are you guys jealous of Sammy Gravano?" I said, "No, it has nothing to do with jealousy." Sammy Gravano, the the plain fact with Sammy Gravano is. He's going to grow bigger until the day he dies. And when he dies, they're going to take his library and they're going to make a lot of money off it for many years. And people will put bidding wars to have Sammy Gravano's library. Uh, would you pretty much say that's it with the library? Well, absolutely. I'll, e I'll even go one further. Why shouldn't I or you or anybody else join the bag wagon? If I can make a few dollars off of a rat, I'm going to do it. You know why? Because he's a rat. And he deserves to get fucked any which way. And if it's finances, fuck him. And if I talk bad about him and you don't like it, go tell Sammy to put a contract out on me. He's so tough. And and that's what it's come, what it's come down to. Because uh, believe me, we could do the easy thing and just come here and just do a story that's not Sammy. But we have you have all sorts of people out there doing stories about Sammy. All sorts of people. I mean. I'm not going to start naming who they are, but they do stories about Sammy's and they don't, what we're doing, Danny, is we, we do it talking back and forth, which is different. We're not just throwing, we're trying to give people something different. And I enjoy doing it this way. Uh, and we're going to keep on doing this. Uh, so what would you like to say, Danny, before we close this video out? You know, all, all I'm saying to you people is that the ones that are haters, do your due diligence. You take this guy at face value. Because whatever he says, because he was an underboss, makes it uh, true. Um, you guys believe what you want. But if you're going to sit here and talk shit about other people, what, what they're putting up about him, you're a fucking fanboy. And that's all you are. You have no fucking clue. Well, with that, we can close it out. People, uh, we don't, when I drop videos like this, they're right underneath here. There's a little thing you can hit, a heart, if you want to donate to the videos. And... Uh, uh, that would be appreciated or you can go to the cash app on the banner you can hit the cash app and do it that way i don't like to ask people but you know i'm going to do it because these videos are not easy to put down uh and we enjoy doing them uh today's saturday and we're tomorrow we're going to do a live uh and we'll decide what time we're going to do a live tomorrow right danny yeah we'll definitely do a live we'll be on tomorrow so everybody please sub if you haven't hit the like button when you see this video and um, have a great weekend. Okay, Danny. Thanks a lot, my man. Okay, everybody. Yeah, I'll talk to you. Okay, take care.